Welcome to the very first episode or the very first lesson in the flight tuber flight school section. We are all ready for that very first uh, flight in uh, in an aircraft. You can call it kind of uh, air experience lesson. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, very basic stuff of an aircraft. How does the cockpit of a Cessna aircraft look? And uh, you know, I'll be talking about certain basic instruments that a pilot always needs to know about and how to interpret the data so that you can uh, keep the aircraft flying. So if you are ready, fasten those seat belts and obviously wear your uniforms because this is very similar to an air experience or the very first uh, flight when you go into flight school. So if you're ready, fasten those seat belts because you're for takeoff. and welcome back to the flight tuba flying simplified through YouTube. My name is Ali Asghar and on this channel I talk about interesting aviation facts, aircraft knowledge, how aircrafts fly, the theory behind it and in this particular series and the particular video how an actual aircraft flies and what you got to do from the cockpit itself. So if any of those things interest you and you are not a subscriber here yet, you might want to consider subscribing. All right, so before we even board the cockpit, let me quickly give a small brief guide uh, through the resources that I am using to bring this experience to you guys so that you can, you know, replicate the same at your home maybe and practice the things uh, for your own. So first of all, the software that I'm using, I'm, I'll be using two softwares throughout the series. Uh, that is Flight Simulator 10 and uh, Flight Simulator 2020. These both the softwares are uh, developed by Microsoft, obviously a very well known company. And these uh, simulators are really well known among the sim world and obviously among the pilot world as well. But to run such a complex application, especially the Flight Simulator 2020 version, you need the beast of a machine. And I'm talking about the laptop that I'm using. Uh, so the, currently the laptop I have is a Lenovo Legion Y540, I guess. Uh, the specifications, I'll be, you know, maybe I'll uh, put it up on the screen. But anyways, which this laptop isn't a very high-end gaming laptop. It still is a gaming laptop. Uh, you know, a, you can call it a mid-range gaming laptop, but it does the work for me. I've played you know, I am a gamer. I play a lot of games. I played GTA 5 and God of War and whatnot. I played all of those games without any lag and all. And obviously, both of these uh, simulation softwares run without any lag. I'll be putting up the link of this app in the description. But this isn't a tech channel. You better go to a tech channel who can, you know, properly guide you uh, according to your range and all as to which laptop you need to buy. But obviously, keep in mind that you should have at least the minimum requirements to run both of these softwares. And now moving on to how I will be controlling the aircraft itself. For that, I've got this amazing flight control stick from Thrustmaster that also comes with a throttle quadrant. It's an amazing gadget. I highly recommend a use of that because it gives you a whole different experience of flight simulation and your learning curve gets uh, uh, you know, better. And without that, flying an aircraft in a simulator actually gets a little bit tricky and uh, difficult. And apart from that, you also have another option from Saytech that has got this whole control yoke. So you can get a feel of a Cessna aircraft or a Boeing for that matter. But for the sake of this video and to keep things simple and the table clear, basically, uh, I'm using just a simple wireless joypad or joystick, whatever you might want to call. This thing does the work since we're not going to do complex maneuvers, just very simple, basic things. That's why I'm using this. So even you can uh, use the same if you would like. All right, so without further ado, let's head towards the aircraft itself. And uh, it's a very beautiful experience and a very beautiful moment in each and every pilot's career to be walking towards the aircraft for the very first time to fly it. I still remember mine. Uh, but anyways, this is a Cessna 172 aircraft. It's a worldwide proven aircraft for training. It's an amazing aircraft uh, and obviously, <laughs> Uh, I've written a flight tuber acronym here, but in, in place of this, you'll be having your aircraft registration mark painted. Uh, so that's it. It's now 172 aircraft, and let's quickly head to the cockpit. So this is how the cockpit or the cabin looks like. Okay, uh, these are the certain instruments, radios over there. This is the control stick that you use to turn left and right, uh, and you know to go up and down. We can pull and push it on it as well, and then the rudder pedals here beneath okay for controlling the rudder and you know these move always in conjunction uh, the left and right is always connected and then uh, you know the power levers and uh, you know i'll be explaining uh, giving a cockpit tour later on uh, but for now uh, this is the cabin itself and the doors cessna 172 is by the way a four-seater aircraft so uh, we have the two seats here for the occupants 
and uh, the flight instructor usually sits on the right hand side and the student sits on the left hand side uh, let's quickly look at the six basic instruments that a pilot always should know about uh, these are funnily enough known as the six pack of a pilot obviously these are the six packs because uh, very basic stuff all pilots need to know about that and that is why these six uh, instruments are separately placed on a different panel you can look clearly and that is how also you'll be finding uh, this on an, on an actual aircraft starting from the left this is called as the airspeed indicator or ASI uh, it's just as the name suggests it shows you your speed through the air very similar to the odometer of your car which shows you your speed on the road next up is the attitude indicator which shows the attitude of an aircraft meaning which way the aircraft nose is pointing is it up towards the sky or down towards the ground so basically the blue portion here represents the sky the gray portion and in most of the aircraft it actually is brown uh, this portion represents the ground or the earth and then uh, the white line separating these is uh, the artificial horizon so if you look outside this is the artificial horizon this is represented by the white line then the sky and the ground are represented by blue and uh, brown respectively so uh, by and these marks these lines here show you how many degrees of climb or descent uh, do you want to have so basically you know uh, how many degrees do you want the nose of the aircraft to be pointing up or down and obviously similarly how many degrees do you want the aircraft wings uh, to be tilted uh, either to the left or to the right and that is what is shown by these marks up here and uh, you know this white triangle is 0 degrees then each line is 10 20 30 degrees and this line here is the 45 uh, 45 degree mark uh, and same way on the other hand so the orange uh, triangle and the orange wing and dot here represent uh, the aircraft right so if you look the aircraft from behind okay these wings are represented by the uh, the orange lines and then the dot represents the aircraft uh, you know belly itself from behind next instrument is the altimeter obviously the name suggests it's altitude meter so it gives you your altitude uh, or how uh, you know high above the ground you are at so right now we are at zero feet so it's showing zero obviously it has got certain other complications as well it always doesn't show your height above the ground but all of that is for ground school section the next instrument here is your vertical speed indicator or VSI so like an uh, ASI shows you your air speed through the air in the forward direction okay similar to that the VSI shows you how much uh, is your speed in the vertical direction so vertical speed indicator basically how fast or slowly are you climbing through the air all right uh, so you know basically if the pointer marks at five just add two zeros to it meaning you are climbing at 500 foot per minute okay you can see it's written 100 foot per minute uh, you know and similarly uh, if it points down it means it's you know climbing and uh, descending at 500 feet per minute the next one and uh, instrument here is known as the hsi or horizontal situation indicator don't get confused it basically simply is just a compass okay it has got north east south and west and it has got numbers through it basically just uh, shows you what direction the aircraft is directly uh, right now pointing towards so simple north is 0 and east is 90 degrees right and south is 180 and west is 270 basic simple maths you know that's the reason why you need to have maths and physics uh, uh, to be a pilot and then the last instrument here is the turn coordinator or the, or the turn and slip indicator it basically serves two purposes to have uh, the turn uh, coordinated and obviously to uh, you know uh, achieve what is known as a rate one turn these things are you know for a future lesson but these are the six packs of an aircraft the b66 six, six, uh, you know instruments that, an, uh, that a pilot always needs to know about uh, let's quickly uh, take off and uh, I'm not going to be explaining you how to take off or how to start the engine if you are right now worrying that come on we need to know how to take off to know how to turn and climb right no if you go to your uh, flight school the chances are this is going to happen your instructor will take care of everything he'll take your permissions fuel up the aircraft start the engines taxi take off and everything and then he'll be taking you to a particular sector or a particular area and in that area you'll be doing you know you will be getting a feel of the aircraft how it feels in the aircraft how it feels when you turn or climb or descend etc in the simulator all of that is not possible so i'm skipping all of those and then let's quickly look at certain basic maneuvers of an aircraft all right so we are right now in the sector and as you can see that you know we are uh, right now uh, somewhere but climbing and you know we are also turning right first thing that we need to know is straight and level flight so straight meaning we are not turning so we will quickly get this small miniature aircraft okay the the wings the the orange aircraft 
level and parallel to the horizon okay if you just do that basically you know uh, and it's also pointing towards the horizon not towards the sky not towards the ground and obviously uh, uh, you know the the triangle is also uh, aligned with the white triangle this basically pretty much means that you are not climbing or descending but for confirmation sake uh, for straight to know that if you're flying uh, straight that is you're not turning left or right the confirmation is obviously uh, from the attitude indicator and then you need to look at your compass or the HSI if it's not turning which means your direction is not changing which means you are straight and you are not turning and then the level flight is basically it means that you are flying level at a particular height okay uh, you are neither climbing nor descending and to confirm that you have two things here first of all your vertical speed indicator so basically your vertical speed uh, is zero you're neither climbing nor descending okay and the other instrument that we can look at is your altimeter which shows you your altitude it's stagnant it's stuck at a point about 2000 feet and it's not changing so you know you're not climbing nor descending that is what is a straight and level flight that you will always always be learning in the very first flight and then the next thing uh, i'm going to teach you is how to turn obviously you take the your control column and turn it you know, towards the left to get into a left turn and obviously to the right to get into a right turn it's pretty simple okay you just turn to the left and if you look at from outside that's how aircraft you know the left wing dips down it tilts down and you start turning left and for the other way around it goes uh, you know the right wing down and you start turning to the right if you look closely towards these uh, ailerons i've explained in the video on flight control surfaces make sure to watch that video out uh, of you know if you turn left and right how the ailerons you know move in the opposite direction to initiate the turn and let's quickly look at that uh, see i'll be pausing uh, at the moment when it's turning so for example a left turn if you go into a left turn and you can see here okay that the left aileron it's deflected upwards okay if you look at from the sideways the wind is coming that way and it's pushing this uh, wing to the in the downward direction and then uh, the right wing in the right wing the aileron is deflected beneath okay uh, pushing this wing upwards and same way happens you know uh, on the, uh, turn to the right just the other way around and how all this happens you can watch the video on flight control surfaces and for climbing up or going down you just simply pull the control column towards yourself just like that that will put you in a climb and you push it forwards uh, to you know initiate a descent and these things will move directly your control surfaces behind you can look at the elevators that's how you you know the, the control surfaces go up look at it from the sideways as well this is how uh, when uh, you know the uh, elevators deflect when you want to climb and when you are going going in a descent this is how the elevators deflect to, uh, towards the uh, ground and then finally the rudders you use the rudder pedals on your feet down here okay if you push on the left the right one is going to come towards you and that's how your rudders will move to the left and similarly the other way around if you push it to the right then your rudders will move to the right let's look at it from the outside okay so the rudder is basically this last portion attached to the vertical stabilizer here and uh, if you push it to the left the rudder moves to the left and if you push it to the right the rudder moves and the aircraft also moves to the right so basically these are some basic maneuvers in an aircraft i have taught you straight and level flight how to keep the aircraft moving straight in a straight direction and to keep it level at a particular height and then uh, i've shown you climbs and descents and and the turns and how you know the uh, control surfaces the flight control surfaces deflect to achieve those i highly recommend you to watch the ground school section as well this video will make make much more sense after you have watched that uh, videos and those series out well that's it for this first lesson on the flight school section and uh, my personal suggestion is always remember those uh, that moment that first time that you are walking out on the tarmac and towards the uh, um, you know aircraft to be flying it for the very first time it's a beautiful moment in any pilot's career remember that you'll be cherishing it throughout your career um, that's me signing off i hope you like the video like uh, and you know subscribe and share the video with your friends i'll be leaving you with uh, the visuals of an actual landing that i performed from outside obviously for now uh, so you've got you get some good views that's it take care and happy landings watch the landing One, two, three.